Okay, so today is October 2nd. This is our uh, first teaching and learning call for this month. I can't believe it's October already. Um, <laughs> so uh, today we have um, a, a presentation from Tiffany and um, John on the auto groups um, functionality. But before that, we will start off with um, announcements and then a couple of quick JIRAs before we get into the meat of the presentation. So um, does anybody have any announcements they would like to make? Free to come on the mic or you can type them into the chat. So this is this is Josh. I've, I've got one announcement. Um, uh, there is uh, a tests and quizzes fix that we're trying to get into 20, trying to get some uh, some community support for. So I wondered. So it's a it's a fix to um, add soft delete capability for uh, draft and published assessments in Samago. And I just wanted to toss that out there to see if uh, there might be any interest in getting together to sponsor this. So if there if there is. Please let me know, and uh, I can I can shove the Jira in the Etherpad a little bit later on. Thanks, Josh. Any other announcements? Okay, one thing I do want to mention real quick, um, and I, you may have seen the email message that I sent out to the uh, Sakai e email lists earlier today, but the registration for the virtual conference is open. Um, so I encourage you guys to get those registrations in early. Um, we do have uh, prom promotional items for the first 150 folks. So um, you'll get your choice of Sakai Gur t-shirt mug or poster and yes the sakaiger will be on them this time i know last time we had the new sakai logo so we're going to put the sakaiger somewhere on the t-shirt um, and uh, we also have the lunch coupons that go out to the first 150 folks so if you want to get in on that um, you want to get your registrations in early and i pasted the link to the virtual conference um, registration page in the chat and the the price is the same as usual fifty dollars for an individual unless you're presenting in which case you get a, a discount so you're only paying 25 for presenters and then the group uh, registrations if you wanted to have like a watch party on your campus invite people to come and um, enjoy the conference as a group um, the group registration fee is 500 for up to 25 folks and um, and you also get uh, a selection of um, promotional items if you register your group before the um, the 11th, October 11th. So get those registrations in early. We hope to have the program available this week. Um, so we're working on that now, trying to map out when the sessions are going to be. Um, and we had extended the, the proposal deadline a little bit. So we're kind of under the gun a little bit to get that program ready. But we should have a list of the presentations available for you very soon. So you can see um, what types of sessions will be available. So with that, unless anybody else has any announcements. Um, oh, one other thing I should mention, um, for those of you who don't regularly attend the core team call, uh, the 19.3 um, release will probably be out sometime end of next week. That's the current plan. So there's still a little bit of QA still happening and a few more um, fixes being um, added in so we're hopeful that by the end of next week there will be a 19.3 release out the code freeze um, as it as it stands right now for version 20 that is going to be october 16th so any of those last minute features like that one that josh mentioned if we want to try to squeeze it in there's still a little bit of time left not a whole lot um, but we do have a little bit of a window between now and the code freeze so with that um, I will go ahead and um, move into our JIRA review. We have a couple of them on here, and I believe both of these um, Adam had suggested. So Adam, I don't know if you wanted to um, talk about these a little bit. The first one, and I'll paste it into the chat, it's also in the Etherpad notes, is about combining the add participants and manage participants um, into one screen. Sure. Can everyone hear me? 
Mm-hmm. Great. Um, so I think the JIRA review will be brief. And uh, if anyone else needs to camp in or has something urgent, you know, please put it in chat. But combine ad participants and managed participants uh, was recommended when uh, Managed participants became its own tab with Inside Info. People then wondered why we had two different tabs. And uh, I believe this may have come up in discussion on a TNL call when we actually placed the Jira, feature request to JIRA. Um, Brian Jones weighed in a week ago saying where we wanted um, the functions to be combined because if you're managing participants, add is a form of manage. And uh, we had suggested potentially putting it on a button on the managed participants. Uh, Brian Jones weighed in saying that these are actually two different code bases and that it's difficult to combine them into one functionality. Um, I'm not sure though if Brian saw where add participant would be a button or not to launch and execute that additional code and whether that was possible. So uh, just a request to weigh in or close this as an issue uh, and sort of poll the teaching and learning group to see if they had strong feelings one way or another. The other JIRA, which I will paste into the chat, relates to uh, the roster not printing well once the roster was refactored uh, using flex boxes. This goes in cycles where people print rosters at the beginning of a term and then never look at it again. But if I remember correctly, Charles Bristow and uh, Sean Platt, among others, uh, mentioned this as an issue with Sakai 19. And Wilma, I think my question is, how can this JIRA get a little love before the uh, 20 code freeze and in the 19 bug fix cycle? Sorry, I was, I was muted and trying to multitask unsuccessfully here. <laughs> okay, so the roster pagination um, feature is, um, is one that, like you said, it hasn't really been touched. So I don't know. I think we would probably need a developer to weigh in to see how big of a fix this is. If it's something simple, then it's possible we could get it in before the code freeze, provided that someone is willing to, to kind of fund that work. Because it, it looks as though this one has kind of not been a super critical. That's why it hasn't seen a lot of uh, major attention thus far. But if anyone is really motivated to get this in, now would be an opportune time. So um, I don't know if we have any developers on the call today. Let me just look real quick. Doesn't look like any of our developer folks are in attendance. So um, yeah, I mean, we could we could ask some of the long site folks to just kind of give it a quick once over and see if they have a, an idea of a ballpark. Um, but that would be sort of the first step, I would think. Okay. And just just to be clear, which one are we of these two are, are we prioritizing to try to get in? Is it uh... Uh, 42178 or 42299? Because my guess is with it only a few days to go, we probably ought to pick one. In my opinion, 42178 is broken functionality, and the other is a feature request insofar as it's working. It's just a little kludgy having the two separate tabs, but other people can weigh in. I mean, if, if that's the case, we're not bound by the, the code freeze for a bug. You know, if that's what 42178 is, if it's something that's broken, we have, you know, until the release to fix that. Yeah, that's a good point. If it's if it is a bug and it does appear to be broken, then that's something that could get in later. On the other hand, if it is a bug and people are actually having problems with it, that seems like it should be something that would be accelerated more than something that could be dealt with later. Uh, 
That's a good point. Um, does anybody regularly print the roster? I'm assuming, Adam, some of the folks at your institution do. It's interesting that you bring this up, Adam, because we just had a couple of requests related to this here at UVA as well. Um, I know, as Adam said, this is something that typically comes up very cyclically because it only comes up at the beginning of the semester when instructors are working on it. But we have had instructors complain mostly that, you know, the printing is a little clunky. They haven't complained that it's out and out broken. We haven't seen that kind of behavior here at UVA, but they have complained that the layout is not very good, that they're aren't very many images per page, uh, things like that. So I think there's definitely some room for improvement here. And uh, it's something that our faculty are interested in. And I see comments from Sean um, at Roger Williams and from Charles Bristow um, that they have people that are printing rosters as well. And I see that Josh is commenting that uh, Sam Ottenhoff has reported this. And so Josh is going to ask him in the background uh, about the possibility of getting an estimate related to that work. So thanks for doing that, Josh. That's really great. So Sam suggests he's writing now that there are multiple approaches that are possibilities. Um, so I'll put these in the chat, but approach A is wait for browsers to fix themselves. Approach B is print to PDF. Approach C is revert Brian Jones CSS changes, and he may be putting in another one. Um, does anyone want to advocate for one of these possibilities, either offline or online? Um, he says that print to PDF is about 25 hours. Reverting Brian Jones CSS changes is five hours. Uh, wait for browsers to fix themselves requires as much time as it takes, but no effort on our part. I know that we have had some preliminary conversations with our development team here at UVA about this. And I think that you know what they were starting to recommend as a very preliminary solution would be something to force the browser to configure that print to PDF option in a certain way, you know, to provide the browser with certain strict parameters that would improve the way that that roster print function looks. I could be lying since I'm only speaking on their behalf and they aren't here uh, to speak for themselves. Uh, but I think that was the kind of solution that they were thinking about as a preliminary, but no work has been done here, at least at this time. And so thanks, Josh, for posting those options there in the chat. Um, that for that print to PDF option, Sam is estimating 24 hours of work. Um, and to revert Brian Jones' CSS changes, he's estimating about five hours of work. And I see that uh, Sean has a comment that when he gets asked about it, he usually prints the rosters for them in PDF. Are they pleased with that layout, Sean? Does that layout typically work for your instructors? Okay, and so Sean comments that the instructors do seem to be pleased um, with that output. So um, sounds like maybe print to PDF might be an option that would work for some folks. And I also see a comment here here from Wilma that print to PDF seems the best option uh, to her, more in line with what users might expect. Um, and Sean also comments that he has to tweak with the printing options to make it look good. Uh, we have also seen that as well. Folks, to close the issue and move on with the uh, TNL call, I'll just say that my biggest concern regarding the print to PDF is print to PDF is effectively the same as printing to the page. You just play around with the Zoom settings in order to get the pagination right. And this is particularly bad in Firefox. So if we're telling users not to use Internet Explorer and to use Firefox or Chrome, well then printing functionality for roster is really best only in Chrome and you have to play with it in order to get the pagination to be right. Yeah, I think that's a really good summary, Adam. Thank you for kind of walking us through that.
And Sean also comments in the chat here that he has a better experience in Chrome than in Firefox. Uh, we have also seen that here as well, Sean. Uh, Firefox is no longer supported here at UVA uh, due to some security concerns that ITS had. Um, so we are using Chrome largely uh, these days, but we have also had a better experience in Chrome. Any other comments about these two JIRAs before we move on? Of course, uh, if you have uh, additional comments and opinions about these, uh, you know, please feel free to go to these JIRAs. Uh, Wilma's pasted those links in the chat. Uh, vote them up. Make some comments here. Um, we obviously still have some things to work out, you know, related to site info, site settings, and how all of those things should be split out and what the most effective way to manage all of those settings is. So please feel free to leave your comments there so that we can continue the conversation. And since it's 20 after and we got delayed just a little bit with my technical problems, we should probably go ahead and move now to our main presentation. Wilma, if you could give presenter privileges uh, to either Tiffany or John. Tiffany, would you prefer to present or would you prefer for John to present? Well, well John, John has, has control of the, um, the prototype, so maybe it would be better if he presents. What do you think, John? Okay. All right, John, I just made you presenter. Sorry, I just had to, uh, okay, I think I'm, I'm good here. Let me, I've never presented in this atmosphere, so let me see if I know how to do it. <laughs> One second here. Uh, how do I share my, oh, here we go, share my screen. And, sorry, I'm, I'm managing multiple windows here, one second. Okay, can you see my screen? I see a note that the screen share has started, and now we can see your screen, John. And now you can see an infinite loop. Is that right? And we can see an infinite loop. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here, let me. Uh... All right. So <clears throat> I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, again, hopefully you all should be able to see uh, my screen right now, and hopefully you're not seeing that infinite loop anymore. Uh, can someone confirm? You are looking yep. good, John. I can see the slides here. Excellent. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you all for uh, giving us this opportunity to kind of present um, our auto groups enhancement um, feature. Uh, Tiffany and I have been working on this for, I think, almost a year now, Tiffany. Is that right? Um, Possibly. So, yeah. So, you know, we, we've put a lot of hard work into this. Um, and, you know, I, I really want to say thank you to Tiffany for all of her help and support throughout this process. It's really been a really fruitful collaboration. So, um, let's go ahead and get started. And Tiffany, I, do you want to kind of um, talk about uh, the, the summary here? Sure. Um, so we brought this to TNL, I think, back in March or so. Um, but uh, just for a refresher, um, so we've encountered issues, or our instructors have encountered issues with the auto groups functionality. Um, because there are these check boxes um, that you can select uh, rosters and you can select roles. Um, and so the user expects when you select these checkboxes, you can select a couple of particular rosters and then a role. So I want students from roster A and roster B in my multi-section course. And I don't want instructors and TAs to be mixed up in those groups. I just want students from these rosters. And so I can randomly create groups from that. But in fact, that doesn't happen. Um, what you end up with is either a role, um, so particular one particular role, so students, um, or you end up with a roster as a group, which isn't even needed because rosters already behave as groups. Um, so there's that confusing functionality because these are checkboxes. 
And then in addition to that, if you want to mix um, groups of users, mix together users from different roles, like I want all students and waitlisted students in my class to be mixed randomly together in groups, I can't do that either. Um, and that was one of the things that our instructors ran into at UVA, um, that they would have to create groups of waitlisted students separate from groups of students or modify the groups of students after creating them to manually add the waitlisted ones to those groups. Um, so those are the kind of the problems in the background. And do you want to show that site, uh, John, that we um, we created in the nightly? Let me just make sure I'm not still muted here. Um, yeah. So let me uh, let me go here to Sakai Nightly for that. Here I can. Uh, give you the link in chat to the. It's, I think it's said, auto slash auto groups. So if you go to experimental, maybe. It's, oh, it's, it's on experimental. experimental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the the site um, alias is auto groups. I think. Hmm. You sure it's an experimental? What uh, I think so. Uh, that's where I'm at. So if you go to sites there. Yeah, auto groups demo, that one. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm going to go here and click on site info. And again, just kind of a quick demonstration of um, some of the things that uh, Tiffany had kind of mentioned. Uh, I'm going to click on, I think it's um, manage groups, and then click on auto groups. And so what we see here is a bit of a kind of a confusing interface. Um, I, as the instructor, would come in here and I'd say, ah, OK, I get to choose my roster. And I have these roles down here. So clearly, since these are checkboxes, my expectation walking into this interface is, OK, I've got two, I've got two rosters. And so now I want to do uh, roles, these roles from these two rosters. Uh, now, this, of course, is not an expectation that will actually be fully realized um, because, as you'll see here, when I click on Add, it, what it's going to do is it's going to create uh, a group for the roster, for these two rosters, and it's going to create a group of just the students and the teaching assistants. Um, and so this is really not what I wanted, and, and it doesn't meet my expectations. I'm I'm very disappointed now because I I kind of again I walked into auto groups thinking that I would I was going to get a specific result and so my expectations weren't met. Um, and in addition, clearly, you know, here I even though I can I can come back and I can I can set up uh, from roster here again the functionality is just not there. So yes, I can choose from roster and I can. You know, I can spell out that I want a specific number of groups from, say, this specific roster. But notice how, you know, when I so let's say I want to do, say, uh, five groups from uh, this roster right here, discussion two, and then click add. Well, I can't actually uh, um, unmix these students. So that is to say, I can't say, hey, you know, I want a group of, um, you know, teaching assistants and uh, the you know, I, I can't, I, the, the mixture functionality is just not there. Um, and so, go ahead, Tiffany, were you gonna say something? Yeah, yeah, so in that case, um, you if you go back to the, um, if you cancel out of this, you can see, oh, um, yeah, no so you can see in group two there that was just created, we've got teaching assistant and Sakai instructor, uh, and then in group one, we've got the admin user. Uh, and group four, there's another administrator. Uh, so it's it's automatically throwing in all the teaching and teaching assistants and instructors and administrators into these groups when you create um, using a roster so from, randomly. From roster, yeah, and roster. I might and yeah. I might not and I really might not want this. You know, I might just say, you know, I just wanted the students from the roster, not the instructor. I don't want the instructor. And so now what I have to do as the instructor, I have to go into group two and remove myself. And then that creates a that creates a void. That creates a little empty space. And so now I need to go back in and also manually readjust um, what student needs to needs to fill in the spot that just got gave up for for the instructor, so that you know clearly doesn't 
meet my expectations. And also it's not going to, it's just going to create extra steps for me. And so then I'm going to wonder why did I do auto groups? It still requires manual adjustment, even though I was expecting auto, auto automatic group creation. Um, Tiffany, did you want to talk about the other, um, the other issue? Uh, sure. So if you go back there to the auto groups and let's say you select the, the um, teaching assistant and student checkboxes, um, it's going to mix them. It's, it, it's not able to mix them together properly. So you can see all of the options for um, the number of groups just goes away. Um, so it, it takes away your ability to create several groups from two role, roles of users. Um, in our case, it was students and waitlisted students, but here teaching assistants and students could not be mixed together into random groups of, you know, five people, for example, or five random groups of people. So, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I mean, we, you know, Tiffany and I, we've gotten multiple requests from instructors saying, hey, I want to be able to to mix, uh, say, teaching assistants, or, or rather, I, you know, I think that the the use case that we ended up using for our prototype was, hey, I want to be able to mix waitlisted students and students from these two rosters and put them into their own specific groups. Or, hey, I want to be able to create um, from one roster, I want to be able to create just student groups and not have to go in and remove. Uh, all of the other extra roles that got that got grouped into those into those groups because I only wanted groups of students. And so, um, you know, basically, again, th this is why, you know, we we decided that, you know, we really needed to come up with a new approach and a new design. And I again, I apologize if you're hearing a bunch of birds where I'm at. Uh, <laughs> it's early in the morning here in California. So. Um, so why don't we go ahead and move on to the uh, prototype here um, that we uh, have designed. And so I wanted to kind of walk uh, you all through this here. Um, we did put this prototype on our, uh, on our slides. And so this is something that um, you all uh, hopefully will be able to access. I believe that this uh, presentation is on um, is in the notes. But again, just to spend just a few moments here showing the prototype, um, I think this would be a really, really useful way to kind of show uh, our vision of how this this uh, this functionality can be improved. And so you'll and, see here. Um, let me also say that um, the prototype uh, production or creation. Um, came out of uh, a mock-up that Wilma did, a really excellent mock-up that Wilma did when um, we were first looking at this and thinking about this. Um, Wilma created a mock-up of you know, what, what um, we had suggested. And uh, we went back through and tried to adjust the language in that mock-up and realized as we were working on it that we weren't entirely sure <laughs> um, what we wanted. Um, you know, even though we had thought about it a lot and uh, we found that working through creating a prototype and working through the language in that prototype, we got a lot more solidified ideas um, and, um, and felt that we were able to improve it through the production of the prototype. Yeah, no, that's actually some really good background uh, that I, I just didn't think about mentioning here. But uh, yeah, I mean, it really kind of, you know, as we, as, as, as Wilma kind of showed us those, those, uh, those wireframes, I think, um, we really got a, a good idea of how, <clears throat> you know, we really started to plan out how we wanted this to look. Um, and so here it is. Uh, this is the prototype we created with Adobe XD. And uh, let me just spend just a few moments here. Uh, showing you all what this looks like. Um, you'll notice here in the first slide of the uh, of the prototype, I'm here inside of Trunk. I've got uh, a site called Auto Groups Test. And uh, here I can, uh, you'll notice the first step here in my prototype is to click on Manage Groups. And here, now that I'm in Manage Groups, I'm going to go to Auto Groups here. And you'll see here that we kind of decided that we wanted to take kind of a kind of a, a wizard approach 
to how these um, how these groups would get created, uh, given this this new vision that we're, we're we're trying to propose. And so here, um, what we did our, we did our best to do was to make it very clear. Uh, what the steps are in this process. And so you'll see here, step one, step two, step three, and step four. Um, so it really, really kind of guides and walks the instructor through the process um, as they are creating these groups. So again, it, 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 it fits their expectations. It's showing them where they're at in the process. Um, and again, it's just a very, very clear workflow. So you'll see right here in this uh, first slide, in my step one, I'm gonna start with, uh, selecting some roles that I want to use for the groups that I'm creating. You know, you'll see here, let's start with the first step. Please select the which site roles to include in the groups you're creating. Great. So I want to use my waitlisted students and I want to use my student roles uh, for my group's creation. And I'm going to click those and then I'll click continue. And then you're going to see here, it's taking me to step two and it says, uh, we see that you've selected to make groups of participants in the following roles. So great, I have I have confirmation of exactly what I selected, and I know I know what step I'm on right now. Um, and it's, so now it says you now have the option to draw group members from specific sections or rosters. Would you like to do this? In this case, yes, um, I do want to draw these participants, these roles, from specific rosters. And so you'll see here again, I have the option to select my multiple rosters here. So again, it's very clear. I know exactly uh, what roles I'm getting and I know that I'm getting from them from these two rosters. And so I've selected those and I'll click, uh, actually before I click continue, you'll notice that um, we also added uh, another spot for manually added users. So we, you know, we became aware of the fact that it might be a little bit more complex than just adding or, or, or drawing users from specific rosters. It may very well be the case that um, uh, an instructor wants to also include any individuals who were manually added in, the pro, uh, in their site, not just on these rosters. So we also added that option as well, although it's not part of the workflow of this particular prototype. So I've selected these two rosters. I'm gonna click continue here. <clears throat> and again, you can see it very clearly. Uh, I now know I'm in step three. Um, it, it's telling me exactly what I have selected. So uh, I'm just reminded uh, throughout this workflow what I've done. Um, and I also just wanna point out here, uh, you know, we've, we've tried to make this interface pretty easy uh, to, to go, uh, to move ahead and to move back. And so you'll see here, I can always, I can even click any of these steps right up here to go back to a specific uh, selection or go back to a specific or, or, or move ahead um, if needed. Uh, but again, this is really, you know, we really wanted to make this very easy. So you'll see here now I'm in step three. Uh, now you're ready to define the group membership structure. Please select an option below. Uh, and so you'll see here in this case, I want to, uh, I'm confronted with these options here. Create two groups, one group of students and one group of waitlisted students from these specific um, two, to these two rosters. So again, I, I again I'm very clear about what I what I'm going for here. In this case, I don't want two groups. I want to create a mixture of students and waitlisted students from these two rosters. And so uh, here I'll just type in uh, you know uh, a team name and then I'll say the number of groups that I want and then I'll click continue and then step four is really the preview and so <clears throat> before I actually save this I actually get a good sense of what I'm creating and so this is also a really good way we you know Tiffany and I felt to 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 show instructors what they're going to get before they actually get it um, and again this this just shows me very clearly uh, what, each student, I'm getting three teams, just as I thought I was, just as I'm expecting to get. I'm getting stu students of various roles, of the two roles, and they're all coming from the different rosters that I've selected as well. And so here again, very, very clear. I know exactly what I'm getting. I'm gonna click save, and now I've got my uh, my groups. And so um, this is, I think, really the end of the, the prototype here, but really, really hopeful for, uh, you know, some thoughts and some feedback. And, and Tiffany, do you have any any uh, comments? 
Uh, yeah, um, one other thing. So when we were uh, walking through this and working on the language, um, I also spoke with uh, my colleague, Nathan Piazza, who commented on, you know, I, I was talking with him about, you know, the idea of using a wizard versus using a single page uh, like it is now where you kind of select something and then something else appears. Um, and he brought up a very good point that with a wizard and some friendly language, like, you know, we see you've selected this, um, that's more targeted toward the novice user, whereas the single page is more targeted toward the, um, the experienced user or the power user. And in this case, I think what we really wanted to target was the novice user and you know, someone who could benefit from some more friendly language um, to be able to create these groups. Um, another thing that um, we looked at when we were uh, creating these selections, like on this page, the define group structure page, um, one of the things we really wanted to do uh, with the create two groups or create so many groups and then say what groups would get created is that it was confusing to us in the current workflow what we were going to get um, when it was choosing from role or uh, from roster. Uh, we wanted to know how many groups we were going to get and you know what that really meant. Um, so. Yeah, no, Tiffany and I really kind of, we, 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 we spent a lot of time thinking about the language um, that was included on each one of these kinds of steps. And so uh, we, 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 we really tried to keep faculty expectations in mind and tried to use language, again, as Tiffany mentioned, that targets the novice user. You know, it might very well be the case that an experiential or a power user might come in and say, oh, you know, I, I wish it were simplified. But you know, I, I really think we should target, you know, um, the the novice here, uh, just because again, even setting up auto auto groups, uh, one of our power users was the one that actually brought to my attention here at Pepperdine, the, the, uh, the, the failed expectations that he was getting. And so again, we really do think that, you know, targeting the non the, the novice user, and being very, very clear in the language really does work does dovetail with our effort to make sure that it, that it's setting up expectations very very clearly and that faculty are, are, are meeting those expectations as a result of going through uh, this workflow and i see laura has brought up a really good uh, question in the chat uh, would it make sense to allow a user to edit the groups if desired on the preview screen and i think that would be a great next step uh, we were kind of trying to keep this workflow as um, limited, you know, the, the changes as limited as possible uh, in our suggestions because, um, you know, in hopes of being able to get funding for it. But I think that would be great if you could also um, sort of uh, drag and drop the, the participants in the groups on that preview screen to generate a different uh, order of, you know, manual change to the. Uh, oh, that's an interesting idea. So, so like, so let's say I'm like right here and you're saying to add, you know, yes, I've, I've done auto groups all the way up to this point, but now what I want to do is I want to be able to take John Doe and replace John Doe and James Bond here uh, and their and their respective groups manually. Is that kind of the idea? Yeah, I think that's what oh, okay. uh, what Laura is suggesting. Uh, that's an interesting and idea. And yes, we would also need an accessible means of editing them uh, beyond a drag and drop. So, you know, some arrow keys or UD keys or something like that. Okay. Now, okay. Now, I also recall Tiffany. If I, I, I I'm trying to remember. There was another checkbox feature that we wanted to add, wasn't there? That we just didn't, we forgot to to add to this prototype. Uh, I think we talked about potentially adding an assign TAs to groups yeah, uh, yeah. feature, but it didn't really That's right. fit in with the because when we talked through it, um, we had originally thought about assigning TAs to the groups. But the problem with that is that you don't really want the TA to be a member of the group. You want the TA to be controlling the group, you know, from other tools like the grade book. I want this TA to grade this mm -hmm. group, for example. And so, it, you know, as we discussed that, um, it seemed like that workflow would be better handled in the appropriate tools where TAs are assigned to do things. Um, right. That's, that sounds right. Um, 
so does anyone have any any other questions or comments um, before I, I move on here to our last last slide? We obviously have a lot of appreciation showing up in the chat, guys. This is really nice work. Um, you know, lots of comments from Charles, Sean, Laura, Wilma, Josh, others about, you know, how nice this looks. I really like uh, the navigation. You know, I know that's something that you referenced, John, is wanting to show instructors exactly where they were in the process and exactly what was left in the process. I think that's really clear. I think that's one of the great advantages about the wizard. Um, I agree that, you know, some kind of editing option on this last step um, might be desirable, maybe in a 1.1 release uh, or something like that. Um, the only thought that I had at this point, and others may feel differently, is that on step three, when you're actually defining the group structure, we would probably want to poll instructors about this, but it seems to me that your second option to create groups, you know, containing a random mixture of students where you customize the number of groups there is probably going to be the more common choice. And so mm -hmm. for that reason, I wonder if maybe that should be the default. Uh, okay. that instructors see there. Um, and I'd be very interested to hear what you guys think okay. or what other folks might think. But just because that seems like it's going to be the more commonly used choice, if I were an instructor, I would hope that the thing that I was going to do uh, would be the thing that showed up first, especially if it was the more common use case. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think that would be a good good. No, um, I think that's a, that's a, great, yeah. that's a great suggestion. Um, we The only reason I think that we wanted to preserve this this first option was because that's that's basically current functionality, right? And so yeah, so we wanted yeah. to make sure that people didn't feel disappointed. You know, I mean, you know, we can't imagine that a lot of people really wanted that outcome to begin with. But maybe I don't know. Maybe there's a couple, <laughs> a couple faculty members out there that are like, "Hey, I want my my two groups," and, I, and sure. It, it, sure. it already does this, so I want that. I you know, don't 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 change things. So, you know, but I, I totally agree with you. I think that's a great, a great ad. Tiffany, do you mind taking a, a note on that? Yeah, sure. And, and the other thing is we might want to move that up. So put the create two groups as the second option um, and start with the create groups containing a random mixture right. as the default with it open. Right. Um, since right. that second option is going to be less, uh, less you used. I agree with Matt. Absolutely. Okay. Good idea. And Laura makes a comment in the chat that, you know, our general goal is generally intuitive steps and less clicks to accomplish it. And so even if we save an instructor one click there, because what they sure. need is right on the screen, that might be valuable to somebody. So just something sure. to think about. Sure. All right. So yeah, no, that's 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 great feedback. Um, those are those are pretty easy changes that that we can make to this prototype. Um, Excellent. So um, let me just move back here um, and go back here into presenter mode. So basically, just 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 wanted to kind of uh, finish off this presentation here with some resources. Um, here was the this was the original uh, request, the feature request. So we just wanted to to link that there. You'll see some discussion there if you're if you're interested and you want to watch that. Uh, that specific JIRA. Um, we came up with a Google Doc proposal as well. Um, and this this was basically the first step. This is this is what uh, Tiffany and I really, really worked on. Uh, even before we we spoke with Wilma and looked at wireframes and started setting up the prototype. Uh, and then of course, this is our prototype. And you'll notice that, uh, and I and again I, I believe that everyone should have access to this uh, to this Google Slides presentation, hopefully, but uh, when when you click this prototype, it should take you to the existing prototype um, uh, that you know we've just kind of uh, looked at here today. Um, and in that prototype, there is the ability to add comments uh, on each slide. And so, if if uh, if there's interest, um, please feel free to uh, to do so. And I'll also link the prototype just in the Etherpad directly. Uh, and when you access that prototype, it comes up in full screen mode. Uh, in order to make comments, you have to hit the escape key on your keyboard. Uh. Okay. So, you know, just in kind of closing here, um, you know, we really do feel that this would be a great, uh, you know, especially in line with with some of the comments and the feedback we've received today. We really do feel like this would be a, a significantly value add 
uh, to Sakai, uh, particularly for those instructors who have larger class sizes and really, really want to maximize the ability to create groups and to do so easily, to do so with, the, with very transparent understanding of the workflow and the process, um, and to really just get their expectations met. And so, um, you know, we. I've definitely noticed that groups uh, get used a lot at our university. Um, and the larger the class sizes, uh, you know, the more that instructors really don't want to have to go in and, and manually create groups. Um, you know, it's just it just takes too long. And so really, really hopeful that, um, you know, we'll be able to keep the, uh, the ball rolling on this and, and uh, come up with a good uh, a good solution. And hopefully get some funding or sponsors to do the development. <laughs> since oh, we yeah. Can't do that's that. a good, that's a good, uh, thank you. Excellent. <laughs> this has been really great, uh, John and Tiffany. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to walk us through it. The prototype is really elegant, and I think it would be a great addition to Sakai. There are definitely a lot of use cases at really almost any institution with courses of almost any size for walking through something like this uh, to create your groups. You know, I think as you guys said during the presentation and as folks like Charles have said here in the chat, you know, when we think about power users, you know, sometimes it's not simply the amount of time they spend in the system or the different things they know. It's how common or uncommon the features are that they're working with for a particular task. And because this feature is relatively uncommon, I think that makes everybody less of a power user when they encounter it, since they don't necessarily use it all the time. So I think this is a really, really nice addition that's gonna make something um, that's not currently available or not currently available in the best way uh, available to folks. So I love it. Um, what's the best way for folks to continue to help you all and to continue to push this forward? Uh, do you guys prefer for people to leave comments in the JIRA? If folks are interested in possibly contributing funding, should they contact you all directly? What's the best way for folks in this group who are excited about this project to help you guys out? I really don't know because I've never, <laughs> I've never um, done a project that where I got funding for it so yeah i was, I was actually just about to defer to, to tiffany on this i'm like tiffany what, what do i think um yeah, no, I, don't I, know. I think you know I, let's see here yeah since i've never done this before either um i mean i do think that it would probably be helpful to get comments and feedback on the prototype itself um that being said, you know, I, I think comments on the uh the juror are okay as too but i i think it'll just be a little bit more clear um, for the existing prototype as is to make comments there. Um, as far as um, uh, funding, um, we we are, uh, Tiffany and I have submitted a proposal for the Sakai Virtual Conference related to this project, so we're hopeful that we'll get some additional um, exposure there. Um, and then as far as uh, funding, um, Wow, I, I, you know, we're hoping that we we'll, we'll be able to keep the ball rolling on this. But uh, and and to answer the question, yes, Laura, this we did uh, approach Farm uh, with this. I think we did that earlier this year. Is that right, Tiffany? I I don't remember. I think we did approach Farm. Um, now we didn't have the prototype at that time, but I remember having a meeting with Farm and 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 actually doing maybe go, going through the, the, the Google Doc and, you know, spelling out what the problems were, but I, I just don't remember. I don't, I, we definitely didn't have the prototype at that time. This is the first time we've actually made the prototype available for other folks to see. Um, so, you know, as, yeah, as far just as... just a, a quick... Um, go ahead. Plug for Sakai Garden. For those of you who aren't familiar with that, is that something we're doing that's new this year at the virtual conference? Um, we have money from the that's raised as part of the conference, and so what we're going to be doing is having people pitch ideas, and we're going to have some live voting. We're going to have a, a panel of judges to decide which projects get funded. So um, that's one way to um, obtain funding for things that aren't currently funded. Yeah, um, 
I've, I've never unfortunately gone about uh, acquiring funding or, uh, you know, um, putting a project out there. So um, it'll be an interesting uh, new thing for us to, to do, I guess. <laughs> Okay, well, we will look forward to seeing this then as one of the presentations for Sakaiger's Den at the virtual conference next month. That seems like a great opportunity for folks who are excited about this to participate and vote it up and hopefully sway those judges uh, into securing some of that funding. Also, if you have uh, questions or comments, uh, I would definitely encourage you to leave those in the JIRA. It's SAC40672. And John and Tiffany posted a link to that in the chat as well. So check out the JIRA for you know some additional context and some additional discussion there. Uh, vote this one up if you're interested in it. Leave any comments, questions, feedback, suggestions if you have those. That's normally a good place to aggregate that kind of stuff. Um, but this looks really great, guys. Thank you all so much for taking the time to share it with us. I think this is uh, going to be a really valuable addition to Sakai. We just have to get that money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for giving us the uh, the ability to kind of share this with you all, and yeah, uh, onward and upward. Yeah, and we do have the uh, the prototype and that um, uh, Google Doc also linked in the Jira description. So um, if you uh, you know p post any comments in the um, in the prototype or uh, or Google Doc, uh, we should be able to access them all from that uh, central location of the JIRA ticket. And I've posted a link to the presentation slides from today uh, that John and Tiffany were kind enough to share with us in the chat. I will also post a link to those on the Confluence page for the teaching and learning group so that folks will have access to those if they want to review the presentation, if they want to access those links uh, to the JIRA or to the prototype itself. Uh, all that stuff will be available there so that you can check that out again if you want a refresher or you can share that with folks that weren't able to be with us this morning, if you want to share that with them as well. I also see a comment in the chat from Josh uh, that Adrian has advocated for the print to PDF option for SAC 42178. Josh, would you mind making a comment in that JIRA uh, and just quickly noting some of the options that Sam had presented to you and also the option that Adrian has advocated for, just so we have a record of that? I think that might be really helpful if you don't mind. Thank you very much. All right, any other final thoughts, questions, comments today? All right, seeing none, our next meeting will be two weeks from today uh, on October the 16th. Uh, we are going to have a presentation of some wireframes from the Lessons 2.0 project uh, from Josh Wilson and Wilma Hodges from Longsight. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, obviously, uh, Lessons seems to be getting better and better and seems to be getting more and more heavily used. So we're excited to see some updates to that. Um, remember that our regular meeting for the first week of November will not take place. Uh, our regularly scheduled meeting on November the 6th will not take place. That meeting is canceled uh, because the Sakai Virtual Conference also meets that week, so we will not be meeting on November the 6th. We will meet only once uh, in November, and that is on Wednesday, November the 20th, uh, when Josh and Wilma will share another presentation with us about some cloud service integration options. So. Our next two meetings, two weeks from today, Wednesday, October the 16th, to talk about Lessons 2.0, and then in mid-November, Wednesday, November the 20th, uh, to talk about some cloud service integration options. And I see a couple last comments here in the chat from Tiffany and John that if folks can do usability testing with instructors on the prototype, uh, that would be appreciated. John has a testing script um, that he can share. If you all wouldn't mind, could you post your email addresses in the chat really quickly so that folks can reach out to you directly if they have resources and are interested in doing that? Yeah, yeah. If um, you know, if anybody has any any desire to, you know, again, has questions, has feedback, comments, um, you know, is interested in doing some usability testing, that'd be great. If you wanted to reach out to us both and keep us both um, 
in, on an email, that'd be awesome. And that way, you know, we can, we can answer your question as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, everybody, for another great meeting. And we will look forward to seeing you right back here in two weeks to talk some more about lessons. Have a good day. And Wilma, if you don't mind stopping the recording whenever you're ready, since you've got the permissions, that would be great. Yep. Stopping it right now. Thanks, everybody.